what's going on? Move the Mouse here back in City Skylines, Season 7, Episode number 34. Let me double check. Episode number 34. So, uh, I've got to figure out what that, that, uh, the hide it mod is. Or not hide it, but there's something to get rid of all these pop-ups. Uh, we're, I want to talk about kind of what happened. I did a little something offline and most of it's right in here. I've been expanding this residential neighborhood and, and kind of as it fills in, painting in the neighborhoods, meeting most of my, uh, residential demand over here on basically what is Kittery. Uh, this is definitely going to be a project. This is a separate highway lane for going into the uh, industrial area. This is still problematic. Um, but, but this is where I've started to make some progress is over here uh, along this strip. And, and those of you that know the area, this is uh, Market Ave, Market Street and Woodbury Ave, basically where this split is off the highway. Market Street, Woodbury Ave. That handles most of the traffic in this area. And it has, since the very beginning of this series, been... Uh, problematic. So I was hovering around 72 to 75 percent. I've seen this just recently after these changes get up to 77, I think is our peak. Um, and and this is still not great, but it is better than what it was. And I wish I'd taken some before and afters, but let me kind of show you what I did here. Uh, there was a traffic light at this intersection to kind of help um, this traffic along. What I've done is I've changed that up a little bit. So over here, we're prioritizing the traffic that, that might get backed up. So this car right now is waiting because it's going to turn left. For anybody turning right, basically, this lane coming from the right side of our screen can go right to get on the highway or they can go straight. They have priority. So does this lane here, though, this one coming off the highway. So for anyone coming off the highway, which is the majority of the traffic, if they're going right, they can just cruise right on. These cars will wait for them. When they stop is when somebody eventually needs to make a left turn, which as you can see is not that often. And it just happens to work out where usually just about the time we're starting to back up onto the highway, that's when there's enough of a break in this traffic coming from the bottom of the screen to allow that car that's waiting, like right there, to turn left. And then again, everybody else, for the most part, the majority of traffic, probably nine out of 10 cars at least, is uh, is coming down into the right so so that's flowing pretty well even though it's a uh, diamond interchange the only thing I did there was change this priority and then I've done a similar sort of thing over here where you know we've got priority coming straight the only time people are gonna wait is if they are turning left which a lot of these are but there's not a lot of traffic coming from uh, up this area right now the only thing that's really up here is city services and some old uh, industrial buildings I still haven't bulldozed I'm pretty sure they're not even zoned anymore think no they are still zoned so we can just get those out of there we don't need these these do not need to be here for sure and uh, I think I dropped this train terminal in ages ago just to get train tracks and since that's not connected let's go ahead and get that out of there uh, here. they're they're unhappy that I removed uh, the train cargo uh, station but they're probably gonna be more unhappy that they don't exist anymore um, then again, they may not be technically unhappy because they don't exist anymore. You have to exist to be happy or not. Um, existential argument for the day. So let's, let's move on down Woodbury Ave and, uh, and take a look here. So, so this is all flowing really well now. Like this is not backed up all the way towards the next intersection where it does start to get a little heavy is up here as we start to approach the roundabout and you may notice this is a brand new roundabout. This was not here before. So let's talk about what I did here. So from a traffic flow perspective, again, it's it's borderline at times. Like right now, if you look at the highway, totally fine, right? We're not backing up onto the highway, but eventually we will just a little bit. And then once that gets so backed up, it'll actually help uh, keep that flow going. Um, so it, it can get kind of right up to the edge of the highway, uh, but it looks like it's flowing pretty good right now. So how I did this, basically, let's let's come over here and just build one of these real quick, just so I can show you kind of what, what I did. We'll come into roads, we'll do two lane highways, 
I'll show you my my principle of uh, of building this roundabout, and then I'll um, zip over there and show you how I traffic managed it rather than have to traffic manage it twice. So we'll start with a two lane highway here. Come out about ten units. I could probably zoom into this a little bit, make it a lot easier. But at this point, we're committed. So basically, use your curve tool to draw a nice roundabout. Bring it out, 10 units. Click the button to bend it, and then just come down like that. So that gets us our roundabout. Now, if you're doing this on console, you've got to be a lot more careful. But if you're doing this on uh, PC, you've got mods that help kind of cheat this out a little bit. So we'll, we'll come out to where the, the, the nodes are so that we can use that as kind of our... Um, North, South, East, West. And in fact, if we want, let's use this trick to brace it to make sure we don't mess it up. And that way, wherever we connect a road, it, it's not going to distort that roundabout. So if we've got roads coming from, from both sides, and in this case, let's do the four lane roads. And let's say those come out to about 10 units away. So we'll do that. We'll do we'll do two sides because you'll get the idea. Um, what I've been doing is two lane highways coming in, and I'll show you kind of why on the tra the traffic management side of things. But what you can do is go about halfway in there, and then you want to bend it just a little bit. And in fact, we can use anarchy to to cheat the system here. But you can do that on console. You just can't do it as tight as I'm doing. But you can do the same basic principle. Now if we switch over to our direction, we want this coming off. And then for this one, this little segment in the middle, um, we want to downgrade that. So we want this little piece in the middle, there we go, to be one lane. Uh, and in fact, let's... I realize I did this backwards for North America. If you're in the UK, it was going to make lots of sense, but let's let's reverse that. Um, so basically what you're doing here, and, and we can clean up the look of it after Anarchy kind of messes it up by using Move It and sort of changing this out a little bit. Um, but then, so here's the thing, right? This doesn't bend quite the way that we want, but it does fix this side of the node. If you want to really fine tune it, you can do two segments of road here. So you could, where's my free form? So you could make a node here in the middle and then connect it. And now we have this, this mess we can work with, right? But what that lets us do is bend the node separately. I know that's total slop, but I'm, I'm just trying to illustrate a point here. So what we can do with this segment down here, this part of the road, is we can make it shift over this way to make the four lane interchange like where this is all hooking in we can make that look better but then we can move this around so that you know this becomes a smoother slope so there's just lots of little ways you could tweak it with move it um, and all kinds of things you can do to you know still have this smooth slope coming in but not necessarily have this distortion down here right when you depending on how that moves around so me mess around with it you can tweak it and, and figure it out. Um, it, it just depends on how much time you want to invest in, in micromanaging and moving little things around. So let me let me actually delete that before I forget. And let me show you kind of how I did that over there. And I'll show you some of the, the little tweaks I did to it to help things move around. Okay, so first thing, this diamond interchange, you can see it's it's moving pretty good, especially for a diamond interchange in City Skylines. It's it's doing fantastic. This one doesn't have any restrictions on it, but you'll see a lot of trucks coming and going from here and from the diamond interchange because I've prevented trucks from using uh, this exit and this roundabout also. Uh, how we did that is underneath vehicle restrictions, basically on these segments of roads, on the exits themselves. When you click on a segment, you can choose emergency vehicles, recycling and dump trucks, trucks, 
uh, taxis, buses, cars. And if you want to eliminate them from an entire segment in a row, and I'll pause it, if I click once, just regular click, it does it for that segment. If I shift click, it does it for the entire length of road from one intersection to the next intersection. But in this case, we don't want to affect that here. We're preventing trucks from going on to the roundabout and from going on to the, uh, the on and off ramps for this part of the highway. So that keeps it down to passenger cars and smaller vehicles right away. That, that helps some of our traffic flow. Now, if you wanted to do something like that on console, you can. It just is a little bit longer way around. What you could do is where I have highway pieces here on the entrance and exit to my roundabout. What you could do is paint a district on just, say, those two pieces of road. Uh, it would have to be regular road, not highway road. So use like two lane or one lane uh, one ways and, and, and just disregard the other connection. But you could then stamp a no heavy traffic or heavy traffic ban on that district that covers just the little on and off ramp to your roundabouts or wherever you wanted to restrict traffic. And that would prevent trucks from using those roads, which would prevent them from continuing on to the road on the other side because the heavy traffic ban does not affect highways. So I've done this kind of on each side, wherever there's a, a four lane road, we've got two lanes of highway exiting and then being forced into those lanes. So I have done uh, lane restrictions because otherwise they'll want to use this interior lane as a U-turn lane. So keep that in mind in consoles. You don't necessarily need uh, a two lane exit because they're only going to sometimes treat this internal lane as a left turn lane. But what I've done at each one of these intersections and let's follow the flow around. So if you're in the right lane, you can exit to the right lane. If you're in the left lane, you can exit or you can continue straight. And this is a single lane piece that is in the otherwise two lane rotary or roundabout, whatever you want to call it. Uh, when we get to an entrance here, we've got two lanes entering. So the uh, blue can take the lane closest to it. The pink can take the lane further away. And the ones that are continuing straight can choose either lane. And why that's important is because there may not be another node before they get to the next decision, which is if I want to exit, I can be in the right lane to take the right lane. I can take the left lane to the left lane or straight. And, and this just continues all the way around. So that helps them kind of pick the right lane or the, the correct lane, I should say, um, so that you have traffic kind of lining up where it needs to get to ahead of time. So all these cars that are waiting in the left lane, I can tell you right now, they are not going to go right. They're going to continue on to one of the other two stops around the rotary. So let's just follow this, this green truck, right? This one right here. So he's getting on the highway. None of these cars that are waiting in the left lane are going to go over here because there's no path for them to go over there. If I wanted to go right, I would need to be in the right lane early on down over here. All these ones are going to continue on around the roundabout. So that's, that's one way to kind of keep things flowing. You can see it's starting to get heavy up here on the highway, but it, it goes up and down, right? It, it's, it's not backing all the way up onto the highway. And if it does, it's only for a few seconds. Um, and then traffic kind of sorts itself out. Uh, another important bit that I did over here was, was this was just way too hectic because this had a, uh, a four lane interchange or a four lane intersection at it. So I just removed that and people kind of have to go around into the areas. In fact, this is a little too far around to be very useful. So let's throw another road in there. I just realized that right now is that we'll even curve it in a little bit. So that helps this run nice and smooth. Uh, this over here is just an exit that is not restricted uh, for trucks. So, so trucks can kind of come around the zone and come into the commercial over here or from the diamond interchange, they can come in over here, but they can't, they can't get to this, this center area, which keeps this flowing for passenger cars. Another reason why that's so important is we have a ton of people coming off the metro over here. This is a very popular stop. Uh, now, when I first had this, there was just a ton of cars that were spawning here. And this is part of the problem that I had was all the people getting off the metro spawn cars. And that's where these cars come from. I've turned off parking on these streets using the lane restrictions or 
parking restriction options just so that I could see a little easier what was actually <laughs> parked cars or what was um, all this stuff spawning to come on. So it's still pretty heavy. But one of the ways that I've reduced people getting into cars is uh, by giving them more pedestrian pathways. So there's a crosswalk right here. I've added a footpath that goes across this block because as you can see, it's a very long block and maybe rather than walk around it, people were getting in cars and driving. So now we've got a ton of pedestrian traffic that comes through here. They can kind of walk around this block. There's a crosswalk right there that takes them through here and through here. So by enabling uh, pedestrians to kind of get around, and if we zoom in there, we can see, you know, these are all potential cars that are on the road. Every single one of those persons, uh, every single one of those people that are, are walking down there um, could be on the roads, but instead, hopefully they're encouraged to all head down there. Whoa. So many of them down there it lagged my uh, 7700K. I don't think that... Uh, I don't think that was a graphical issue at this zoom level. Um, I cleaned up the mall parking lots a little bit. So there was one over here and one over here. And I thought uh, I had to move it because the collider was where this uh, roundabout now lives. So uh, I figured I'd move it over here. And we might even move the, uh, the Eden Project over here. Let's just do it. And that frees up some more room for commercial or a park or, or something fun over here. In fact, we have commercial demand and industrial demand. So maybe we could do this. Let's, uh, let's pause. Let's do this. Uh, we'll bulldoze that cemetery. We'll put one across the street in the trees. I think it's j Is it just enough buffer for the parking lot there where it's not disrespectful to be that close all right um and then we can clean up these trees just a little bit because we don't need them there but maybe now we could have a little kind of office block over here so we'll dezone that and go all the way up to this uh this little park over here That'll meet a little, little sliver of our industrial demand. But that should fill up pretty quick. I just want to check. City planning, high-rise ban, good. Citywide, we've got a high-rise ban. Unless we've turned it off, I think, on a per-policy or per-district basis. Um, and then we can kind of come back in here. One final touch. Just fill that in. Some trees. Those last couple trees will get overwritten, but that's okay. Here, we'll do that. That way we're not wasting, uh, we're not wasting props. So that's kind of what I was working on. Um, I was banging my head into the desk with a couple different ideas and, and it just wasn't working out for a recording. So I, I got it to a spot where, you know, it's a little bit better. It's not perfect, but, but if we do these little improvements all around the city, you can see, like, we're not backing up onto the highway anymore, right? We're not, you know, we're not even, we're not even backing up over here that bad. Before I had finished fixing this, the, the trucks were all lined up on this strip, and we're backed up onto this roundabout. But it's it's flowing pretty good. It it's a little slow here and there, and when you're dealing with sixty seven thousand people in cities, that's going to be kind of a guarantee you're going to run into some traffic issues. But um, at least here, at least on this strip, this little section of the map. That's what I was working on this morning, and, and it's definitely better. It is not perfect. One of the next big projects is going to be this area over here and handling all this industrial traffic. Look at this. So this this is the, 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 the regular cars that are coming into this residential and commercial area. This lane is all the trucks that are going to that underground highway to get to the industrial area. And if you look at... I mean, if you look at this backup, right, it's actually to the point where it's affecting other intersections. It's coming all the way back down here, which at times can even back up here, which slows people getting on this way. People are slow over here. So we've got to find some better ways to get the trucks around our city or more specifically to get them into this industrial area. So I'm going to come up with a plan for one of the next episodes 
to kind of come up with some sort of highway that runs through here so that, that this traffic is just really moving and it gets where it needs to get to within the zone. It's going to require us to kind of rip out the center street, move some of those businesses out, but in the long run, it will mean uh, more efficient traffic flow through here, which will affect potentially all this highway down to the turbine, which is, you know, still moving traffic around pretty well. We've got a uh, five-star zoo and amusement park. We've got the uh, the Bushwood Country Club. And, oh, we hit five stars, unbeknownst to me, on our nature reserve. So that's all maxed out now. But there you go, some behind-the-scenes stuff since I, I couldn't figure out a good, uh, fun way to record that. Um, like I said, I... I Came up with a solution. Hope I hopefully I gave you some insight into uh, how I fixed some of those problems. That this was I don't know if those of you might remember. Um, this was really wonky when I put it in. This is a little bit better, but it looks so flat from certain perspectives. Looks like it's just a ribbon laying on the road on the otherwise flat road. Could have to do with a light too. Get some shadows on it. Some some late evening shadows. Maybe not. Doesn't look any less flat. Uh, hey, City at Night, let's do it for the outro. We'll do some random cinematics. It's not the best frame rate, but I won't uh, I won't set up any cinematic extended cameras yet. I'm going to save that for a couple weeks from now when we're wrapping up the series. And we'll get much more exciting shots than that. Uh, maybe I should set up a cinematic camera. But I kind of want to save the big fancy nighttime flyby um, for that. And uh, it does take a lot of work at this point in the series because the frame rates are so bad that once I turn all the level of detail up, I'm lucky to get five frames, 10 frames per second. And then I have to record the clips really, really slowly. So that's going to be quite the um, quite the process to embark on once we're ready. But it's not that far off. We're making progress and hopefully it has been uh, an entertaining episode for you today. Tune back in on Friday. We'll have another episode and maybe more of the traditional format. Uh, than today's, but I wanted to share some of the, the building process with you. This Saturday at 9 p.m. Eastern, if everything goes to plan, we'll be kicking off a live stream of Outer Worlds. So tune in for that if you want to check out something a little bit different on the channel. Hopefully you can make it or catch the replay. If you enjoyed this video, likes, comments, and shares all help the channel and are greatly appreciated. If you're new here, subscribe for more and consider hitting the bell to get notifications for updates in this and other series. Follow me on Twitter and join the Discord if you're new here. They gotta stop doing that. But until the next one, this is Move the Mouse, signing off.